I used to get a different face every time I tried making an AI version of myself, but after testing every tool out there, I finally figured out the one method that makes your AI character actually look like you every single time. And so in this video, you'll learn exactly how to build your own AI clone that actually looks like you, no matter what scene, style, or prompt you throw at it, and I'll show you the one secret tool that makes it all possible. Let's get into it. To do this whole process, I'm using a tool called OpenArt. If you want to follow along, there's a link in the description so you can go through the exact steps with me. When you first sign up to OpenArt, you'll land on the homepage. There's a lot going on, but what we need is on the left side, a tab called Characters. Go ahead and click that. From here, you'll see three options. Start with four plus images, start with one image, start with a description. They're pretty self-explanatory, but for the best consistency, you want to choose start with four plus images. Click that option. Now you'll be prompted to name your character. You can use your real name or a nickname. After that, you'll see the image drop-in box. Inside, you can upload between four and as many images of yourself as you want. I recommend uploading as many as possible with different angles, different lighting conditions, and a variety of facial expressions. The more data the model has, the better it can replicate your appearance accurately and consistently. As you can see, I already have a bunch of my own images here. Once you've selected all your images, just upload them, and at the bottom of the screen, click Create Character. And now you wait. Training usually takes about 5 to 10 minutes, depending on how many images you've uploaded, so I'll get back to you once it's done. Now that the model is finished, you can access it by clicking the Create button. Once inside, look to the left, you'll see three new options. For now, choose Prompt Plus Reference. When you click that, you'll see a window with a lot of settings, so let me walk you through the important ones. At the top, there's the prompt box. To use your specific model, just type in your character name in the prompt. That signals the AI to reference your look. Right under that, there's an option called Auto Enhance. Always leave this turned on. It helps OpenArt auto enhance your prompt, and honestly, it's a feature I haven't seen anywhere else. It saves a ton of time. Then we have Prompt Adherence. This controls how strictly the AI follows your prompt. If you want the AI to be much more creative with the prompt, set this lower. If you want it to follow your instructions exactly, set it higher. I recommend playing around with this one yourself so you really get a feel for where you want it. Next is the character weight. This is key for how closely your features are preserved. If you want the AI to fully replicate your appearance, turn this all the way up. If you want to explore different looks or styles, you can lower it. There's also a toggle for preserve key features. When it's on, it works together with the character weight to lock in your identity. When it's off, the AI has more freedom, but the output won't look as much like you. Then we have image guidance. We'll cover this more in a bit, but one feature I want to tease right now is called pose reference. With it, you can use a 3D model to control the exact pose your AI character takes. It's insanely powerful. Now let's generate some images. To generate images, of course, we first need some solid prompts. Now, if you're completely new to prompting, don't worry. I've created a specific AI template just for this video that you can paste into ChatGPT. You just fill in your idea, like what outfit you want, the feel of the scene, the aesthetic, and ChatGPT will generate a clean, good-looking prompt for you. The image should feature your name. In this case, it's my pre-trained consistent character. Keep the character exactly the same, but specify everything else based on my idea. The outfit, the setting, the pose, the lighting, the mood, and any other small visual details. Now turn that into a specific, high-quality prompt that the AI will understand. I've already done that, and one of the prompts I created includes me standing in a completely different outfit than usual to really test if the AI gets my look right. Once I have my prompt, I just paste it into the box, making sure to include my name with the at symbol so the AI knows to use my custom model. As mentioned earlier, I always leave the enhance option on, and because this is a more specific prompt, I usually set the prompt adherence to about 6. For the character weight, I leave it at 0.8. I found this balance gives me pretty consistent results. I leave the rest of the settings as is. One quick tip here, before we make the image, I always recommend generating at least two images, just in case one turns out off. Four is a great middle ground, and if you're feeling ambitious, you can go up to eight. So now I'll go ahead and create two images and see what we get back. Now that the generation is done, let's take a look. This is literally me standing in a castle, wearing a sleek tuxedo, and it captured all my features. It's so accurate that even though I can tell it's AI because I made it, someone else would probably never guess. It even nailed the outfit, despite the fact that the training images didn't have any clothing like this. So I would say this is a very good result. Now to test the pose reference feature I teased earlier, we're going to try something different. I'm going to take this with me in a new environment, standing in front of the Tower of Pisa. 
So I copy the new prompt back into the prompt box, make sure the at my name is still in there, and now I'm going to set up the pose. I click the plus icon to activate pose reference. Now I open the pose builder. First, I set the gender to match, male in my case. You can also fine tune body type like make it shorter, athletic, etc. I'm just gonna go with the basic male body. From here, you can either choose one of the preset poses or move the limbs around manually. I'm not a designer, so I'm picking the arms slightly spread preset. My character shows up immediately, and now I adjust the camera angle to face straight toward the character. This way, we get a clear view of the face in the final render. Once I'm happy with the pose and the camera position, I click update pose in the top right. That locks everything in. Now I click create and let the tool generate the images. For this type of pose-based generation, I actually recommend choosing more images to ensure you get a great one. The generation's finished, so let's check the results, and these look incredible. Now it does look a little less like me compared to the earlier ones, but the core features are still there. This tells me I might need to increase the character weight next time. That's something you can experiment with too, to dial in your results. Now finally, let's go a step further. Let's generate a video. I'm gonna select the best image I've made so far. For me, it's the tuxedo one. And in the top right, I click image to video. This opens a new tab where I can generate an animated version of my AI character. From the model options, I highly recommend selecting Kling 2.1. It's hands down the best quality model for this purpose. It's my favorite video model, and the quality difference is immediately noticeable. The motion is smoother, the consistency between frames is better, and it handles complex scenes way more effectively than the older versions. The cool thing about open art is that you can easily switch between these models, depending on what you're creating. So, while I'm recommending Kling for this, don't be afraid to experiment with the other models once you get comfortable with the platform. You'll see a box to enter your prompt, where you just describe what you want to happen in the video. I'll keep it simple. The character is walking slowly towards the camera while the camera is backing off. Then for quality mode, I choose master to get the best output possible. And with that, I click create and let it render. Let's see what we get. Watching this, I can honestly say it looks really cool. The AI even added a subtle adjustment to the sleeve of the tuxedo. The character moves naturally, the outfit fits perfectly, and the vibe is just on point. Honestly, I can almost imagine this as me walking through some grand castle, like I'm some super important character in a movie. It's proof that you can create a consistent version of yourself that fits into any environment, in any outfit, for any purpose. Whether it's for video assets, storytelling, or just for fun. This is 100% a win. So now you actually know how to train a custom AI model of yourself that delivers incredibly consistent results, whether you're creating images or full videos. And with OpenArt, it's all in one simple workflow, easy to use and shockingly reliable. If you wanna start creating realistic, professional looking AI content of yourself right now, then sign up to OpenArt and start building your AI self today.